get things going in just a second. Let's make sure we turn on all the streams that we want to do. And welcome for those of you who are already coming into the room. I love that when you guys are right on time, we'll start right on time and learn some cool InDesign content. All right. Welcome everyone and welcome back to another InDesign Tuesday. Uh, my name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe. It's my pleasure to be streaming to you live today uh, on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon here in Atlanta. We're going to be talking about six tips to uh, make it easier to work with images inside of InDesign. So uh, InDesign has been, of course, using images since day one. Uh, and it's pretty easy to get started. You just draw a frame, bring in an image, or don't draw a frame and bring in an image. But there's more to it than that. There's more you can be doing. Hey, Dana Pride, how's it going? Uh, thanks for joining me as well. Um, and welcome to everyone around the globe. Let's go ahead and kick things off. I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump over to my computer. And of course, I've got InDesign open, and I'm going to talk about these six tips in no particular order, like I don't have a planned order for them. Uh, the first one that I, I want to talk about is a simple one that a lot of people don't realize you can do. Uh, for example, you can create a frame, of course, from the frame tool. We would expect that. You grab the frame tool, you can draw out a rectangular frame, you can draw out an elliptical frame. And if you hold down the shift key, it'll be a perfect circle. Hold down the shift key on the rectangle, it'll be a perfect square. And you even have a polygon frame tool to draw polygonal, polygonal frames. Uh, you can draw your own frame. So you can go in with the pen tool and you can click and you can drag and you can drag and you can drag and you can drag. And I'm not sure what I'm drawing here, but uh, you can go ahead and drag and drag and drag and click and then you'll have this weird shape and that will be your um, your frame as well. And of course, uh, you can remove uh, points and convert this into a different kind of frame, different shape. And you can also, of course, use the other tools like the convert direction tool and the add point tool and the minus point tool to add and minus points. Uh, but this is not a pen tool tutorial, obviously. So you can't, and by the way, if you want to move the points around, you use the direct selection tool and you can reshape your shape. All right. Once you've got this shape, this can be a frame as well, but drawing inside of InDesign is never really a fun thing. Uh, I, I kind of started drawing like this weird shaped spoon and now I've got this weird shape. Illustrator is a much better drawing program. So if we delete this mess that I made with the pen tool and we head over to Illustrator, I've got a perfectly drawn guitar. So this is just vector shapes drawn with the various shape tools or with the pen tool or with the curvature pen tool or the various ways of drawing inside of Illustrator. But once you draw this, if you copy it, here's the key. If you copy and paste between Illustrator to InDesign, then the vectors stay live. If you place it, then it's going to place it as an image. So in other words, it, it will just be an image. You can scale it. You can use it as an image, but you wouldn't be able to use it as a frame. So I just copied it from the clipboard, edit, copy, command C, however you copy, head over to InDesign and command V or paste and that will paste it as a vector. So as you can see, it's still got all the points. It's still a, a vector shape for me to mess around with. And once you have it in here as a vector shape, then you can bring images into it. So I can go and grab my actual guitar photo, drag and drop that in from the library or place it using the place command. And then that becomes a placed object inside your perfectly drawn vector guitar. And of course, you still have the ability to move it. And here's another bonus tip. This isn't one of the six. But when you get the grabber hand or the content grabber to move something, if you just click and, and grab, you notice that big red rectangle around the outer edge there? That's the whole guitar. So if I, I start dragging that, I can barely see the guy's fingers, so forth and so on. Now, here's the tip. And I have I call this this uh, nicknamed this patient user mode for like 20 years. 
and design will be 20 years old this year. And that is, if you don't, if you want to be able to see what you're doing instead of just clicking and dragging and moving around like that, then what you can do is hold the mouse button down and count to two. Count to two. One, two. And you'll be able to see the entire image. You'll be able to see the image that you're moving around and get it exactly in the position you want with one drag instead of click, drag, click, drag, click, drag. Now, of course, you can also scale this down while we're at it. So I can say fill frame proportionally and get to see as much of it as I can fit within the guitar. Um, and you still have the ability to move it around. Patient user mode. I held it down. I counted to two before I started moving it around. And then I can move it around once I uh, can see what I'm doing. So I can get things in position much easier just by clicking, holding the mouse button down for two seconds, visually being able to see it, then moving it around. All right, next up, uh, that was tip number one, vector frames from Illustrator. So whatever you draw in Illustrator, copy, paste into InDesign, it becomes a frame. You can use it any way you want. Uh, next up, and this is going to count... Uh, for something that I'm going to do over here. All right. Uh, this is going to kind of... I actually want to do it here. Uh, I'm going to place an image. And actually, I'm going to place it the old-fashioned way. Instead of using a library, I could go to File and Place, which is the original way of placing things. Or I can just drag and drop from the operating system if I know where it is. So I already have the folder open in the background here, what, what I want. I want this image. I'm just going to drag it in because that way I don't have to file place and go look for it. It's right there. I've already placed it. It's it's already lit, ready to go. So that loads up the place gun as it always does in InDesign. And then without holding down any keys, if you just drag, it will scale it proportionally by default. This has been a thing in InDesign for a long time now. When you scale, when you want to place something and you haven't created a frame yet, if you don't hold down any keys, it will just scale it by default without you doing anything extra. When you let go, that'll be the perfect scaled size of that image, non-distorted. All right, so that's not the tip. <laughs> Here's the tip number two, is edit original. And it's one of the things I take for granted because I've been doing it so long inside of InDesign. I would love to use this photo, but what I want is the person without all the scenery. I don't want the rocks, I don't want the mountain, I don't want the sky. In other words, I want to cut the person out of the background. Now, InDesign can't do that. It's not an image editing tool. It's an image, it's a placement tool, it's a page layout tool, graphic design tool, but it's not an image processor. That's a job for Photoshop. So edit original would be, uh, you can right click and do it. So you can uh, right, uh, I think you can. No, actually, yeah, there we go. Right click, you can then say edit original. You can do it there, but that's not the way I do it. That's why it took me a minute to remember where it was. I don't do it that way. What I do instead is just hold down my option or alt key on Windows and double click. That is edit original. So alt or option, double click, boom, you're in the original application. So if it was Illustrator, it would open up in Illustrator. Photoshop opens up in Photoshop. So here we are with just the background. I'm going to use uh, the same method I always use to cut people out of backgrounds. I'm going to start with the Quick Select tool. I'm going to use the Adobe Sensei Powered Select Subject with just one click, usually. This one's going to require a little bit more cleanup because Adobe Sensei just wasn't able to figure out what's going on down here with her feet. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and use the Quick Select to add back in the missing shoe, the missing leg. And I'm going to use a very small brush, hold down the Option or Alt key to just click away the inside here between her feet. So we just don't want that part. And uh, we can get this little tag here. Why not? And we don't want that part in between the shoelaces. So I'm just doing a little touch up here of the things that I don't want to come over. Oop, I didn't mean to go that far. Things I don't want to come over into my InDesign document. All right, so just cut out some of this rock stuff. And this is hard for the program. If there's not enough contrast, it just doesn't know what you want. So it's having a hard time with that, but that's okay. I got most of everything I want and it did a great job of selecting pretty much everything about her, her hands. I'm just going around the edges, making sure it's got everything. I don't want to be missing any fingers or limbs. And of course we don't need that little part in between the strap there. 
I don't really care about those straps sticking out, so I don't care if it doesn't include those. And everything else looks pretty good. Okay. Next. So we got it selected, and we'll just go to Select and Mask to cut it out. And that will cut it out. Now, of course, you if it were like long hair or fur on an animal or something like that, then you can use the Refine Edge tool to clean it up some more. But for the sake of example, this will be good enough. I'm going to output this to a new layer with a layer mask. That's the option down here at the bottom right of Select and Mask. And then we'll just click OK. So that'll give me a brand new layer inside Photoshop. She's cut out. The original layer is still there if I ever needed it. But I can save this now because the original file was a PSD. So I'll just hit save. It adds the additional layer. Close it, head back to InDesign, and boom, it's cut out. Because when I placed the original PSD, it was a link to the PSD. So when I said edit original and save, it updated that link inside of InDesign. Now, um, the picture, of course, was a lot bigger with all the background and stuff in there. So I don't need all of that. I can use the frame to get rid of the pieces I don't need, all that extra white space. And because it's just cropping using the frame. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my command and shift key to scale this proportionally because InDesign still needs the shift key. Photoshop does not anymore. Uh, but anyway, I've got this, and of course, I can do one more thing. Uh, let's see if I can see it on the control panel here. I want to flip this the other way. I want her to be facing uh, the other direction, facing into the document, not away from it. Now, the uh, the that was tip number two, edit original. Tip number three, we're going to skip over to text wrap. Uh, text wrap is the ability for... Photoshop, or I'm sorry, InDesign to wrap text around your image. And there's a whole text wrap panel that you can go grab. Uh, here it is, I'll tear it off, but you can go grab that from the window menu, go down to text wrap, get to the panel. Once you get that panel open, you're gonna like just be so happy because you're gonna think, oh, there's the option, number three, that's the one I want. Wrap it around the shape of the person. Yay! The, the text will just wrap perfectly around her, her feet and her legs. That's exactly what I want. Until you click it. Once you click it, you'll be a little disappointed because this is what happens. And you say, well, wait, that's, how's that any different than wrapping around the bounding box? That looks exactly the same. Because the InDesign team way back then when they did this gave you an option to do it, but you still have to do it manually. And that option is you come down to the contour options and you choose how you want InDesign to figure out how to wrap around the person. So since there's an alpha channel, there's a Photoshop alpha channel, I would choose that. If there wasn't an alpha channel, I would choose detect edges. So in other words, just use the alpha channel that we originally got from Photoshop to do it. Or I could choose detect edges and it will wrap it slightly different. I kind of like the alpha channel option better in this case. Now, you notice this little red line all the way around her? That is the path that it's using, and you can manually adjust that path with your selection and pen tools and all that. Uh, the other thing that I, I don't need to really manually do it, but what I don't like is I don't want the words touching the subject. I don't want the words coming in so tight that they're actually bu bumping up against the edge of the subject. So you've got this, um, I forgot what this is called. Let's see, what is it called? The offset. So if you go to the offset, you can just tap the, or a couple times on the offset to spread the text away from the subject. And it makes that red line spread out for you. So you don't have to do a lot of manual adjusting. And that does stick with your frame. So if I use patient user mode and I move her around, we can see it updating as I put her wherever I put her in this layout so um it's usually kind of distracting by the way just as a bonus tip to have text on both sides it's it can you can do it you can get away with it but i would use it sparingly text wrapping around one side is probably a better for your readers a better thing to do now how does that work with vectors let's put the text actually we're not done with text wrap just yet let's go grab a vector image drag it in we'll just place it here 
And same thing, if I, if I do text wrap around the whole thing, oh wait, that's just really wrapping around the box. It's not really, it's not wrapping around her, or I'm sorry, the, the lemon in this case. So what I wanna do is choose, te choose the same thing, but in this case, there is no alpha channel because it's not Photoshop. So in this case, I want to detect edges. Figure out what that vector is and wrap the text around it accordingly. And the same thing applies that if I pick this up and move it around, the text will continue to wrap. Oh, sorry, I'm picking up the image, not the frame. There we go. There we go. Pick that up, move that around. Uh, it will wrap. And again, I don't want the words touching, so we just use that offset to move it further away from the subject. So that is text wrap, which is tip number three. Tip number four, and this is kind of a just, you have a choice between how InDesign works with your images um, in terms of the, where they're stored. Right now, everything I've placed inside of InDesign is placed as a link. So there's an actual links panel. If you go grab your links panel and find it, you'll find everything that you brought into your InDesign document that's linked. So the lemon's linked, the hiker is linked. Um, those two things, I was gonna say, where's my guitar, but that's a different document. Uh, the guitar would be linked in the other document, so forth and so on. If you want, and let me back up a minute. What I mean by linked is that's a great thing that it does that by default because if I use this lemon in 50 different documents, maybe it's my logo and I'm using it in thousands of documents. I don't wanna to have to duplicate the logo thousands of times in, in terms of storage on the hard drive. So it's linked to one lemon, one hiker, wherever they exist, no matter how many times I place it in the same InDesign document, no matter how many times I place it in multiple InDesign documents. It's worked that way since day one. If you go to give this document to someone, then you'd have to remember to package it so that it gives them all the images they'll need. Because if you just give them the InDesign document, they, they'll they open it up and they'll be missing this hiker. They won't have the full res. They'll be missing the lemon. They won't have the vectors. They'll be missing all those pieces. So you have an option. One is you can keep it all linked, which is great. And then once you're ready to hand it off to a printer, a friend, a colleague, whatever, then you can do a package. And InDesign will create a folder with your a copy of your InDesign document and a copy of all the links, no matter where they came from, in that one folder. So then you can hand, you can zip or compress the folder, put it in Dropbox, Creative Cloud, wherever, give them the folder, and they got everything they need. Or Here's the tip. <laughs> you can, on an image by image basis, say that, nope, I want this, I don't wanna to have to make a copy or remember to package every time. I want this image to be part of the InDesign document. I don't wanna to have to have, keep a copy of it and I don't want to do any of that. So if you right click on any of your links, you have the option to embed link. That's the tip. So if I choose embed, I'll get a little icon letting me know that that is now in the InDesign document. So if I throw away or disconnect the hard drive that has these images on them, doesn't matter. I can give this InDesign document to anyone and they'd be able to open it up because now those two images are, are inside the document. Now, what does that mean? The document is gonna be bigger. It's gonna be as big as the original InDesign document plus the size of those graphics. So if that's a 40 megapixel or 40 megabyte photo, then now your InDesign document just got 40 megabytes bigger because you're, you said keep a copy of it inside the document. That's another reason why we link. So that we don't have you know 40 megabytes duplicated every time I use that hiker. Uh, so the tip is if you absolutely need to do it, you can embed. All right, so we've done four tips so far. We've done vector frames from Illustrator. We've done edit original. We've done embed the image. We've done text wrap, two more. And this next one's one of my favorite hidden, been there for a while, no one really knows it's there, <laughs> tips about working with images. All right, let's pop over to this one. And I'm gonna put my text wrap thing away. I've got this image with, um, what is it, eight frames? 
Two pages, eight frames. So it's waiting for some images to come in. Here's the trick. I'm going to show you the images. I'm going to open up. Actually, I'll open them up in Bridge so you can see them. Here, let's do it this way. We'll open that up in Bridge. Yes, I do. There's Jason Levine. Um, sure, that's not what I wanted, but let's go ahead and get what we want. You can tell how much I use Bridge on this computer. <laughs> I've never opened it. All right, here, here are the images I'm looking for. So these images down here at the bottom, if I click on one, you can see them. If we get out of film strip view and go to essentials view, we'll see them better. And if I make this bigger, we'll see this bigger. And let's go ahead and make Bridge bigger as well. All right, Adobe Bridge CC, been around since CS2, uh, is an image file or browser. It's a file browser in general, not just for images. Um, and it will let me not only see the images of any particular folder that I point it to, but it will also let me modify or see the metadata. So what I have done for each one of these images is I've gone in to the metadata. Let's see if I can find it here. Dun, 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 dun. I'm looking for a specific field. All right, shouldn't be that hard to find. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, there are keywords, there's description, and I'm looking for title. Okay, that's what I was looking for. So for each one of these, I have put in a title in the metadata. Now, you can put that in right here in Bridge. You can put it in Photoshop manually, which is hard, harder to do. You can do it in Lightroom. You can do it anywhere you can put in metadata or access the metadata. So Bridge is an easy one if you're not a photographer because it's easy. All right, once you put in all that metadata, you can use that metadata inside of InDesign. So let's switch back to InDesign. So basically just not only naming the files, you've actually gone in and put in a title, a description, you know, whatever. You put in actual, you're describing the images in the metadata of each image. Now what you can do with that information is called a caption inside of uh, InDesign. InDesign has live captions. So what do I mean by that? First, you, there's two parts to it. You have to set it up first, which is part number one. So we go to object, we come down to captions, we go to caption setup, and this one's already set up. To use the metadata caption, and these are all the things I was talking about. So there's title, there's copyright, creator, there's some more up here, there's all these metadata things. So there should be one that's called description or something like that. There are keywords. Uh, basically all the metadata that you saw, in, there it is, description, headline, all the things that you saw over there in Bridge that can be modified. I used title. So I just basically said, use title. Don't put any text before it. Don't put any text after it. Just use title. I want this to be below the images and use the captions paragraph style. So that way I can style how the text looks below the images. Offset it from the images by this much, and that's it. And you can even say group with the image if you wanted to. So I click OK, and nothing happens because I said it was two parts. That was part one, setting it up. So we basically enabled it. Now we actually have to tell it to use it. So I can either show it to you by placing the images first and then turning it on. I'm trying to think which will be more dramatic. Or turning it on first and then uh, placing the images. Uh, let's do a little of both. Let's do one page one way and one page the other way. That way you see it both ways. All right, so I'll select these four image frames. And I'll go up to um, the object menu, come down to captions, uh, captions, and now I have the option to generate live caption. Because there's no images in there, it's just going to give us like a little error message. And that little error message says, no intersecting link. What engineer on, on the planet thought that that would be the proper error message? I have no idea because that doesn't mean anything to the average person. But what it means is there's no image in there. There's no title to get. So now if I go grab four of those images, ooh, and two of them are the same. Sorry about that. Let's go grab these three and that one and drag them over to InDesign. 
and I click, watch what happens when I place it into each one. Boom, the long and winding road became the title. Boom, Monument Valley Eye became the title. Boom, um, the Laden Boathouse became the title. Sunrise at Sabi, in Sabi Sabi, South Africa. So those titles automatically came in because I told the frames to use live captions. Now, if because, because we use live captions, that means if I go change my mind and I say that this one should now be in place. Ooh, I don't know what I just did. Hang on. I didn't mean to drop it like that. Hold on. There we go. And I replaced that one. Now that one's the boathouse as well. So it's live, meaning you change the image, the caption will automatically update as well. So it's totally up to you. All right, so now to do it the other way, if I go over here and grab four images, let's grab these four, because again, I've used, I've got two that are the same. I switch over and I say that that one's gonna be the sunrise. Nothing happens because we didn't tell those frames to have live captions. So we can select the frames now with the images already in them. And then we can go up to object, captions, generate live caption or static caption because these now have images. So static caption means it'll be a one-time thing. You replace the image, the caption will not update. I don't know why you'd ever want that, but generate live caption is probably the one you're gonna use. And boom, it grabbed them all except this one. This one does not have a title. Let's go fix that. So it's even gonna be more, more dramatic than I thought. This one, right, does not have a title. So it did not bring one in. So this is actually flying over Moscow. And if I come back here, nothing changes because the link is out of date. Meaning that now that, hey, we noticed that something changed when you weren't looking. Do you want to update the link? Yes, I do. And boom, flying over Moscow is now the title under that photo. So each photo got its title from the actual photo because of live captions inside of InDesign CC. And if I go change the titles and update the link, boom, the titles will change. If I replace the images with different images that have different titles, the titles will change. I love live captions. All right, last but not least, let's go back. Oh, we're already in InDesign. Let me go back to one of the other documents. Is that the one I want or is this the one I want? No, I think this is the one I want. Yeah, this is the one I want. Okay. Um, and this is a new one that got introduced, and I've talked about it several times already, but it got introduced at Adobe Max, and it's called Content Aware Fit. So what would happen before Content Aware Fit if you had a rectangular image frame like this, and you drug in or placed a vertical image? Well, the usual stuff happens. We drag it over, we place it inside the frame, and we see the middle of the person. Not really what we were looking for. Now you could go in and do a fit option, which you normally would. You would go in and you would say, well, fill frame proportionally. <laughs> it doesn't really help you very much because the width of the frame means that we need to get all the way to the left and right side, but the top and bottom InDesign doesn't know what that image is. So it doesn't know what to do. It doesn't know if that's a person. And even if you're willing to sacrifice the part of the person you'd want the face to show like you, that's what you'd be looking for so let's undo that let's not do content aware fill like we normally oh, i'm sorry let's not do fit, fill, fill frame proportionally like we normally would do let's do the brand new option which is content aware fit so once i choose content aware fit it figures out based on the image what the important part of the image is and shows me that part that's what content aware fit is for now, it, I, I would still argue, I want to see more of her arm, but it says, oh, there's a face there. That face should probably be in view, and it did it. And I could use patient user mode to bring it down some more where I would want it if I were going to use this image So in this non-vertical frame. So content-aware fit 
is an option on a frame by frame basis. Or more importantly, if you go to your preferences, your general preferences, you can say make content aware fit the default frame fitting option. So in other words, you don't have to do it frame by frame. Once you turn this on, all new frames you create will automatically default to content aware fit and therefore you can just place content and it'll look better. Um, it, you still may need to adjust it just like I need to pull her down a little bit more to see her arm, but I'd rather have to do it a little bit than to have to do it every single time. So in a lot of cases, content aware fit will do the right thing without you having to do any other adjustments. All right, so those are my six tips for working with images inside of InDesign. I'm leaving that off in the preferences, obviously, so I can show it next time. But on my regular working uh, system, I have that turned on. So vector, the first one we showed, vector frames. Copy paste from Illustrator, the vector you copy and paste becomes a frame inside of uh, InDesign. Uh, number two, we did a edit original. So we open up this image in Photoshop by option double clicking, remove the background, came in, and then we did tip number three, text wrap. And we showed how to wrap text around the regular shapes and let InDesign figure it out and how to move the text away from the image. Tip number four, we talked about the ability to embed an image inside the InDesign document case you ever need to do that. Tip number five, which is one of my favorites, live captions. So if I go in now and I go back to bridge and I say, no, 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 uh, flying over Moscow, that should say Moscow, Russia. Um, then it will update the image in the metadata. I come back over to my links. It will tell me my link is out of date eventually. There it is. Right click, update the link. And now that says flying over Moscow, Russia. So, Beautiful, just being able to update the metadata of hundreds or thousands of images and they update your InDesign document in a very descriptive way as well. All right, and tip number six, content aware fit. And that is using uh, Adobe Sensei to figure out what's the best placement for an image that you place, which you can turn it on to be the default. All right, with that said, I am out of time. I'm actually over time, but I think it was worth it to go through those tips in detail. And I hope you got something out of them. I hope you take advantage of them uh, for your next InDesign project. And cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. And we'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody. Uh -huh.